Hey guys, I want to talk about something that um, I've been calling patterns for a long time. I've got to break that habit because it was pointed out to me that not the right word. <laughs> patterns are things like for things like wallpaper and stuff. What I need to be thinking about is more in terms of uh, route planning, uh, sequence, whatever. So this is a situation that a lot of you probably already already seen. Uh, this is the hypothetical situation. Is this is eight ball, my opponent just ran all the stripes and then missed. So now here I am. And now I, I plan my route to the eight. And every game situation is different. You know, players are different, they have different abilities and all that. This one here is pretty darn basic once you see the route. And for some people, it's going to be more obvious than others. A lot of you guys have probably already seen it. Now, all this, all this right here is is nothing but stop shots. I have to worry about the eight, kind of, but the three is a good key ball to get on the eight. Everything else is just a stop shot. I don't have to do anything special, no fancy draw or force follow or anything like that. Just. Take my time, put the shots in, try to leave myself on the rail too much on the shot. And it becomes a really easy run. And one of the big reasons that was a really easy run is because of the route planning. And that's just kind of what I'm getting at. Now any good player would be able to run these balls out anyway in probably just about any order, any route. But other routes would have been a little bit more difficult than stop shots all the way through. I, I think we can probably all agree on that. And that's what I try to do. I've said many times in the past that if I do well at seeing the route in eight ball, I always called it the pattern, Wrong word, I know. Um, if I do well at seeing that route to the eight, then I usually shoot eight ball pretty well. Back in my 20s and 30s, a lot of times I would see it almost immediately. And I played eight ball pretty well back then. But nowadays, because I don't play a lot of eight ball, I have to try to plan my route better. And I hope I hope I see it. I know I've also said before, if I don't see it, I may as well just stay home. It might not quite be that bad. Like I said, a lot of the stuff a good player can get out anyway, even if it's tougher than it, than it might otherwise have been. But that's the deal. The other thing that, that I I've never really been any good at is walking up here and picking my route through all eight balls. It'll usually just be just a couple things that I look for. Um, in this case, you know, maybe the three would be a good shot, a good key ball before the eight to shoot the eight here. Maybe the five in the side would be a good key ball if I can get to go all here. Just kind of stuff like that. Those, those would kind of maybe be ideal key, key balls to get on the eight. As I'm walking up to the table, I usually would notice stuff like that. There's a cat. Um, if I had more time or was contouring better, then they might say, okay, what's a good key ball to get on the five, for example? Well, hell, the six is right here, so that's good. I just kind of go through like that. The, uh, the plan for me has never been to try to get the perfect route of eight balls, in this case, in my head and execute it to perfection. Because odds are, my well, odds are pretty good, they're, they're decent odds, that I'm going to screw up that perfect route and have to change my mind. So I try to get into the habit of every shot, after every shot, reevaluate. Do I need to change my, do I need to change my planned route? Or can I salvage it? Or is it 
is it still perfect? In most cases, I would say in most cases I can probably salvage it because I don't screw up that badly. But I need to keep it in mind that it is absolutely a possibility. Getting too straight in on this floor was not ideal for me. I would have liked to have followed up, hit this rail, and come out here for the two. Didn't do that. So this is going to be a good case right here where I'm, I'm changing my route. I'm no longer going to try to get on the two from the four. I'm either going to shoot the four and draw back here and shoot my key ball that I was going to use to get on the five, or I'm going to shoot a stop shot at the four and then the three. It looks like I'd be pretty straight in on the three. So I'm not super thrilled with that. This is just thought process that happened in it. Everybody goes through these at, at varying levels. And in my case, I'm switching my switching my eight ball key ball from the six to the three. Which means I'm gonna leave the three there for now. Come back here. Boom boom boom. If I'd have gotten straight in on the two, I've been very tempted to shoot it right now. I didn't get straight in, I don't care. Because I got nice easy six. That the main one of the main things I try to look out for is well, it's called zone position. Instead of playing shape for the six, which I just did, but in a way I kind of played shape for all three of these balls, all four of these balls. Had I gotten where I didn't like my position on the six, then I could have shot the five or the two or maybe even the three. And uh, a lot of zone position happens with me playing games like eight ball or even one pocket. Sometimes you have to play for a ball. This is why I'm not doing an example of rotation. You're playing position for a ball, and you have to get the right angles to get position for the next ball. With a ball, you just have a hell of a lot more leeway. What I don't like, in this case right here, is I don't like the five where it is anymore. If the five isn't going to be my key ball, then I don't like it. Because if I get any kind of a weird angle, I could end up bumping the eight, do something screwed up. So I'm gonna shoot the five as quickly as I can. Um, I think what that means is I'm gonna shoot it right now. Even though I'm pretty darn good on the six, I'm gonna shoot it right now. That way I don't have to worry about getting some angle where I'm gonna get into the eight when I shoot the five. Now this should be fairly basic at this point. Um, well, I think I, do I have props? I don't know if I have props. I do have props, but I don't know if I can get back there and get them. So, brief history lesson. Back in the olden days, the 80s and 90s for me, depending on your area of the country, may, may be sooner or later, uh, bar boxes, the cue ball was different than the object balls. And this was so that the cue ball return stuff would work. Nowadays, in this area, they're all diamond tables, and the cue ball is essentially identical to the object balls as far as weight and mass and magnetism and all that. But back then, it wasn't the case. An awful lot of places had, well, they had an oversized cue ball, bigger than the object ball, sometimes comically oversized, or they had what we would call a, we would call a, a mud ball, which was same size but heavy made made out of something different and it was heavy um, the thing about those two types of cue balls is they were very tough to get draw on the ball follow was a piece of cake follow was easy as hell I remember that I remember a guy up in the Seattle area uh, what was his name I think his name was Chuck and he was a seven up in the Seattle area and he was the master of the oversized cue ball and planning the routes with that oversized cue ball. All of his routes though were me ideally, I'm looking at maybe a little bit of bottom, bounce off the rail type of stuff, or a stop shot. All of his were follow. And it was a beautiful thing to watch what it was. Because he had he had all that down pat, great. Uh, 
same thing with a mud ball. The bar I used to play out of in Omaha, the back table had a mud ball that was ridiculously heavy. And even the, the people that were going there with the best strokes in the room could barely draw the cue ball. Because she had a stop shot, and that was about our limit. So our routes, just like this Chuck guy in Seattle, uh, involved an awful lot of follow, because that was easier. And so knowing that helps to plan the routes and makes the game easier than it would be if, if I was just like, okay, I have a shot to five, I'll shoot it, and then see what I have next. Well, okay, I'll, I have a shot at the seven, maybe I'll shoot. No, if you, if you do a little bit of planning of your route, it might work out great, and then you don't have to, uh, you don't have to think as hard anymore or work as hard anymore because you've kind of got this stuff planned out. If you have to change it, you have to change it. Nothing carved in granite as far as what route, what is the best route to take to do whatever. Or shouldn't be. That would be. I guess there have probably been like proposition games like that before. Plan your route, or if you screwed up, you know. I don't know. I just started hearing. So I'm not ideal on the six. I wanted a little bit more angle on the six. To come out for the two ball, straight in, and then the one in the side. That's what I wanted. That's not what happened. So I'm going to have to shoot the six harder, and again, kind of play zone position. And at that point, I don't care if I get on the one in the corner, or the two in the side or in the corner, or the one here. I don't care. All I need to do is make the six. And as I've talked about before, <clears throat> now that I know how to get shape on some other ball, I don't even really know for sure which one it's going to be. I can put all of my focus back into making the six. That's eliminating all those other things and hopefully not getting the split brain syndrome. So that's all I. All I, have, all I know is I'm going to shoot this center ball, touch it left, and, and harder than I would have liked. Try to get the cue ball back out in this area. That's all I have to worry about. No longer playing shape for anything. No longer playing the cue ball to the position. Anything at all. All I know is I'm going to hit it this hard, a little bit of left English, and I'm going to make the six. That's all, all I can do. come out here. It just so happened that I got pretty good on the one. So that's great. I don't have to shoot the two and then the one in the side, which is just a little bit iffy. I'm straight enough on the one. All I have to do is shoot it, bounce off the rail a little bit, and I'll have the two in the corner. That's all I have to do. So again, not, not playing shape for the two. Just hope, just I will happen to get shape on the two if I make the one. I was a little bit stretched out on that shot. I was actually a little bit concerned about it. When I bent over to shoot the one, I was, I, I'm a little bit stretched out. Maybe I, maybe I would have been better off shooting something else. Shooting the two in that case. Um, in an ideal world, I would have stood up and thought about it some more. Which one I wanted to do. But there's a cat right there where I put, where I want to put my foot. This is just put this damn ball in. And then put this down. This is what I've been doing lately for my eight ball practice is just throwing out solids in the eight or just stripes in the eight to help me to get my brain more used to seeing the routes without all the interfering balls, you know, the other suit out there on the table. Um, here in a week or two, then I'll, I'll go back to just throwing all 15 balls out. And, tr and trying to plan the routes and stuff. At that point, you start dealing with well balls that are hooking your optimal path. You start dealing with clusters and things you have to rig out. But there's almost always still going to be a route that you can take uh, to deal with that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to just cover just very briefly. It's, it's on the same subject, but. Everybody does have different skill sets and stuff. And 
well, a lot of the demonstrations I did involved just a stop shot or maybe a soft roll, stuff like that. If this is my setup right here, I don't care which order or which pocket these two balls go in, it's probably easier for me to just shoot the 11 and come back and then shoot the 10 in the same pocket. That would be to shoot the 11 with like a little bit of follow. I don't know why my phone's making noise. Yeah, we do not answer potential spams. Anyway, what was that? Where was that? I could shoot the 11 with a little bit of follow, walk all the way down there, and then shoot the 10 up here. I don't need to do that. If I was playing with uh, a mud ball or an oversized ball, that would probably be something I would have to seriously consider, though. I didn't feel like I could get any draw whatsoever. So I could shoot the 11 and just draw back. I can even shoot the 10, bounce off the rail and draw back. I don't think that's necessary in this case. I'll just come back a little bit. So, I mean, for me, that was an easier route than the other way. The other way for a more beginner player, or like I said, playing with the, the mud ball or something, better route for them might have been shoot with a little bit of follow, walk all the way down there, and shoot the tent up here. Everybody's going to have different routes. For the most part, everybody is. I guess at the the, uh, the top levels, you're going to get like that stop shot stuff that I had at the beginning. You're going to have that, and probably nine out of ten like professionals would have seen that. Doesn't mean they would have shot it, but they probably would have because that was a pretty pretty basic example. jacked up. I don't like being jacked up, but that just means I have to work on it practice it. So I think I'm going to stop the video mercifully. And you'll see if these spammers left a voicemail. They probably didn't. They never did. Bye guys.